It's been one of Italy's treasured names for over a century. Maserati is an exotic brand when you think about sports cars, fast GT cars, racing. A brand born in the world's most fertile supercar valley. The origin of a car is more important than ever. It represents the beauty, the culture of Italy. Culture that creates automotive passion on the road and inside the factory. I wear this symbol on my shirt, and it fills me with pride both inside and outside the factory. Now, Maserati is embarking on its boldest step yet, and its very first SUV. Ultimately, they have to sell cars to stay in business. It's an ambitious plan to radically reimagine the mark, and it hinges on a machine called the Levante. Torino, Italy, the fourth largest city in the country and the epicenter of mass-produced Italian automobiles. The northern Italian city of Turin is basically the Detroit of Italy. It's where all the car makers are, it's where cars are assembled, and it has been for over a century. It was an automotive town. The core of this town was automotive. All the guys in Torino are proud of this type of factory. Historically, this blue-collar city has manufactured machines for the people. But in 2016, that all changes when Maserati decides to build their newest model here. The blue-collar workers are really proud. When we knew that a Maserati model was arriving in Mirafiori, let's imagine our surprise. Wow, Maserati here in Mirafiori. <laughs> It is a huge source of pride to be a part of this group and to build this luxury vehicle that has a power known throughout the world. That is the beauty. Maserati is not only spoken of highly in Italy, but also across the world. That is the source of our pride. Pride that is put on display inside the Mirafiore factory where newly painted bodies are delivered to the final assembly line every six minutes. We are uh, at the first workstation uh, of the assembly shop. From the paint shop arrive here the paint body, and then we start uh, the assembly of the car. It's the first of 137 high-tech stations that bring a Levante to life. Yet the walls here often echo with the past. The workers in Mirafiori have a great competence in building cars. They have a history because Mirafiori is the oldest plant in Italy. We have a long story. Here we produce more than 26 million cars in 35 different models. Mirafiore opens in 1939 and immediately becomes a cornerstone in the country's push towards mass production. The sprawling facility sits on a site that is twice as big as Monaco and once had over 40 kilometers of conveyor lines, 37 entry gates, and 10,000 telephone lines. This is the history of the industrialization of Italy, starting from the beginning of the 19th century until today. At its peak, the site employs 50,000 workers and is the largest industrial complex in all of Italy. However, by the start of the 21st century, the factory struggles, often open just three days a week. In 2012, this plant was without new cars. We are coming from a very not easy period. We had uh, two, three years of layoff. 
In 2015, the fate of the factory and the local area wildly changes for the better when Maserati invests 1 billion euros to build the Levante. We changed not only the lines, but also the mindset of the people in order to build a new car with a new quality standard premium car. Mira Fiori has been renovated. It's a very bright, wide open space, and the work is more efficient than it was at one time. The workers are comfortable. Much attention has been paid to these details. The renovation helps return the glory, yet it's the historic foundation that offers the advantage. We have uh, really a lot of space. Let's imagine that more or less one million of square meters for uh, the entire plant. These days, times are good in Mirafiori, and they build 150 Levantes a day. So we have more or less 350 workers per shift. And so they need to stay in a good atmosphere, in a good team, and to work in cooperation. Refurbishing the factory not only restores jobs, but also offers a chance to integrate some modern tech. We study the new technology to use that into the line, for example, a smartphone. Smartphones and watches are typically a way to connect with others. Inside the factory, they use them as a tool to build a perfect SUV. Are you ready to certify the operation directly on smartwatch? So push the button on green, yes, it's OK. And then certify the next operation, it's OK. So it's not necessary to go out of the car, go to certify, come back to the car to continue to operate. Craftspeople working inside the machine use watches. Outside on the line, they use advanced touchscreens. This is my dominion, we are in Trim 2, Dominion 1. I am showing you the operator terminal. This is a technological innovation that was recently brought in to all the assembly lines. When I do this, we see the first screen of the operator terminal. We find all the important messages which are performed at this particular station. The terminals are digital cookbooks that showcase the unique Maserati recipe. We can initiate a request for a part when we have the missing part right in front of us. So if an employee sees a missing part on the line, he can now order it. Ensuring parts continuously flow to the line is a very big deal. One car needs more or less 5,500 parts to be built. Keeping the parts and pieces straight is crucial due to the amazing number of variants. We can have more than one billion combination to have different cars for different clients. Nearly every Levante recipe is different, yet the passion for the machine and the brand is always the same. Italian people, we are passionate, no? It is natural for us to be passionate, to love this car. It is an honor to work for Maserati, to work for such an important manufacturer that is known on a global level. Italian people, we are magic. We can transmit this passion and this love also in our job. The pride underscores the country's belief in itself and in speed. Italian people believe in our ability to build a specialty car, and we are proud to create our product all in Italy. It's a piece of Italy. It's a piece of our life. It's a piece of Italy that means the world to Turin, yet it owes its existence to a century-old story born 300 kilometers away. The Maserati Levante is a high-performance luxury ride that goes north to 100 kilometers an hour in just 5.2 seconds, has a top speed of 264 kph, and 
comfortably fits five. Today, the machine is built in Turin, Italy. Yet its heritage was born a three and a half hour drive into the heart of the country. Welcome to Modena, an ancient city situated in the heart of the Emilia-Romagna region of Northern Italy. In a land of antiquity, it's a place unlike any other. In 100 kilometers, maybe a little bit more, you have Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, Ducati, even Dallara. This area is full of artisans working on the automotive, so this becomes a specialty region. Commonly known as La Terra di Motiri, or Motor Valley, this area is the crucible of speed. I think it's innate. We have it inside us. We have always made them. It can't be an accident that all of the great brands of sports cars come from right here in Italy. And Torino, Madena, Marinello, just to name a few. Uh, Sant'Agata Bolognese, motorcycles, other brands. Now the region is known for creating highly exotic, highly expensive, high-performance machines. However, back in the day, the area was far more grounded. This territory was very important for agriculture. And so people start to work with farming machines 150 years ago. And this developed the mechanical knowledge of this area. It's a remarkable transformation from fields of farmers to a land full of supercars. Here there is no particular, let me say, landscape. There is no sea, there is no big mountain. We are in a historical place, but not so important like uh, Rome or Florence. The people in this, in this area are very passionate on cars, and I think that the passion was the first ingredient of this plate. On the other side, people from this area love pretty much the life. So I think if you put together these two ingredients and the desire of people of making products, then you will find some of the roots that led this area to become Terra di Motori. The roots for speed go deep. Modena is the ancestral home of Maserati, which is founded by three brothers in 1914. Since the Maserati brothers sold it, has basically just been mismanaged and nobody's known what to do with it. This is a company who's gone through so many different iterations and so much financial disaster that we should all be glad they're still here. In 1993, automotive conglomerate Fiat becomes the latest savior and attempts to restore the glory for good. That was always this tough spot for Maserati because where people thought they were and where they actually were, were always tend to be two different things. Under Fiat's watch, the mark becomes synonymous with exotic, high-end, luxury four-seat saloons. Unfortunately, however, it never sells very many machines. About five years ago, Maserati had some pretty ambitious goals, and they were a company that sold 5,000 or so cars, and they wanted to hit 50,000. To reach the lofty sales target, the brand decides to expand its portfolio of models and offer an affordable machine known as the Ghibli. There is always a danger going down market for any brand. They put out the Ghibli a couple years ago, and that went down to like E-Class 5 Series price level. And that's pretty low to go for Maserati. The Ghibli helps increase the Mark's footprint, but it doesn't break the brand into the big time. They want to chase BMW, Porsche, Land Rover. Maserati has this great name. People recognize the Trident symbol, but a lot of people have never seen a Maserati. The problem lies in a changing market. What the mark does best is no longer enough. People aren't, aren't buying sedans in the same way that they're buying SUVs. To survive, Maserati must forego tradition and enter the SUV market for the first time. It was very clear that the market was shifting to the SUVs, the sport utility vehicles, and so we started to think about the Maserati as an SUV. To close the gap between luxury automakers 
the team starts discussing their next step in early 2014. The idea was to make the first Maserati SUV, deriving it from a sedan platform. So the same platform on which the Ghibli and Quattroporte has been developed and designed. It's not so crazy that the Levante is based on the Ghibli. That's the move in SUVs now, and what are now called crossovers are car-based SUVs. It's basically just a big car. The decision to build the Mark's first SUV is a bold move in a new direction. So the team relies on one of the godfathers of the Italian automotive scene, Roberto Corradi. His name may not be well known, but his work certainly is. I started my professional life in Ferrari in 1988, immediately after the military, and that was a great occasion. I was very happy to work on an amazing model like 430 Scuderia or 599-612 Scaglietti. And finally, I was in charge of the complete development of the first model of California. I was asked to come back to Maserati. The decision was to grow from 7,000 car a year to 50,000 car a year. That's the right way to do it. If you have one person with a knowledge base to make a Ferrari that great, well, why not put that person in charge of Maserati's chassis development and say, sprinkle some of your magic and make this work. Corradi taps Paolo De Laccia to run the day-to-day -day operations as chief model engineer. I start back in the year 2000 with Ferrari. I started as a CHI simulation engineer. I then passed to the car testing department, and that's very helpful for me because it helped to increase my skill, not only from a theoretical side, but also from a real experimental side. The team quickly settles on a powerful all-wheel drive system for the new machine. Normally, the car is always rear-wheel drive. 100% of the torque is in normal condition given to the rear. And we enhance torque to the front suspension only when endurance condition needs us to do so. While the powertrain layout is obvious, the suspension is another story. The new territory for us on the SUV was about suspensions because we were used to design suspension out of our racing heritage. When we came to the sport utility vehicles, the question rise up about the ability of such a kind of knowledge in the off-road conditions. To conquer what lies off the asphalt, engineers develop their own Skyhook suspension system. It has that name for a specific reason. The concept of it is to tune the system in a way in which the body stands still and the suspension are the ones that are absorbing the bumps. The backbone of the Skyhook system is a set of advanced air springs. To go off-road and on a racetrack, which is something buyers are unlikely to do, but it's something Maserati would like their vehicles to be able to do. They have an air suspension. To prove the system, the team tests the new machine all across the globe. There was a lot of development. We made millions of kilometers everywhere in the world. We went to Dubai in South America, in China, and every time we were learning something, the testing department discovered a complete new world where they're testing not only the car, but even if you want their previous experience, they challenge everything they knew about the cars. Passion really helps a lot in this work, especially when the tough times come, because passion is what really can drive through the difficulties, because you have the dream, you have the vision of what the final product should look like at the end.
While engineers have a clear vision for the mechanicals, inside Fiat Chrysler's Centro Stile design studio, a team of car designers must bravely define the new look. Here at Centro Stile, we're working on the future. We have the crystal ball here. We know what the automotive future looks like for the next two, three, four, five years and to a certain point beyond. And that is an amazing, amazing experience. Klaus Busse is the man tasked with leading the Maserati design team. My journey as a designer started very, very humble. I started with graphic design, and everyone was cutting and gluing together text. It wasn't for me. Then I did a little bit of fine arts. No, it wasn't for me. Industrial design. So I spent a good amount of my education doing the wrong thing before I found my home in automotive design. Defining the look of the Levante comes down to answering a single question. What exactly is Italian design? That is something that keeps me up at night. I'm not Italian, as you can hear from the accent. But when you look at Italian espresso, it's an iconic Italian cultural icon. Yet there's not a single Italian coffee bean in it. The ingredients can be very cultural diverse, but the process of how we create our product and the outcome makes an Italian icon. The process is unique, and so is the history of the land. It is the birthplace of Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, the Renaissance. So they are constantly surrounded by culture and this passion. The empire might have fallen ages ago, but the art remains and still influences the work. You have Silicon Valley in the US, but you have the Design Valley here in northern Italy. And that is really the importance, not only for Italy, but for automotive global design. The concern about the SUV was always the same. If Maserati is the right brand to, to have an SUV. So first of all, the car has to be a Maserati. Then it could be an SUV or a coupe or a sedan. When we approached first time on uh, SUV, it was a big challenge because it was a completely new segment for style point of view for Maserati. The team starts by putting pen to paper. The main root of Italian designs are the proportions. Next, they move to computer-aided design. The brand is not static. It's something that is evolving car by car. Digital sketches turn into life-size models thanks to an advanced milling machine. Then it's time to get old school and work with clay. Many, many hours uh, in the day, in the night. Uh, me and other uh, two designers involved on the exterior of the project, but also many times working uh, by hand on the model, because it's very important, the human touch, to keep the soul of the car. While the exterior shape is hypercritical, in a luxury SUV, the interior is equally important. The thought is try to merge the Maserati brand identity with the SUV attitude. So on one side, we have the sports attitude of Maserati. On the other side, we have the exclusivity of Maserati. So we need to balance and to keep alive both of these. Probably the most important thing is Maserati is to let the material and the surfaces talk for themselves. We didn't want to have plastic that looks like uh, fake material, so we try to treat every single material like it deserves to be treated. You're looking at a property of the car that was kind of in the middle of the process of the car. The team at this point was almost completely fixed, and we start working uh, on the details. As you can see here, the main theme that is uh, the double saddle originally came from Ghibli. It takes months to handcraft the perfect balance of Italian sex appeal and everyday luxury. If you launch a Maserati, it has to be something special. It's not loud, it's not ostentatious, but it always is Maserati first, with all the elements, passion, sculpture, the beauty. Let's not forget we're here, the holy grail of automotive design, Italian design, and this country is very, very passionate about their cars. The passion might stem from the land, but it's what the people inside of Maserati's Mirafiori factory do that instills each Levante with heart and soul.
Maserati's design and engineering teams have worked relentlessly for nearly two years. Now, it's time to turn concept into reality inside the Mirafiori factory in Turin, Italy. We are in the body shop where we put together all the metal and aluminum shit to have the final body. Every eight minutes, the machines move to the next station. We have 70 robots, so not so huge amount of robots compared to other lands. A robot can do a lot of things. So we can weld, we can glue, we can move parts, we can rivet parts. The robots do a shocking amount. On this body, we have 3,570 welding points. 70% are given automatically from our 70 robots. Welds are reinforced with 120 linear meters of adhesive and 220 self-piercing rivets. We use them to join together the aluminum sheet. At the first key station, they build up the bottom of the vehicle. So, first process is to join together these three floors into the underbody, where we also weld all the metal pins that will be used in assembly shop to put together the car with the chassis. The completed underbody is then sent to the framing station, where they add the inner body sides using a machine that puts the science in science fiction. While robots weld the pieces in place, the automated sled reloads with the exterior body sides. And then the process begins again. I have a lot of favorite stations because I love a body shop. This was my first work in 2006, so I know very well this process. I think that the mariage of uh, the underbody with the sides is the heart. While the body sides are being welded into place, in another part of the shop, they use a massive multi-panel swivel to manufacture the doors. Every day, they randomly take a nearly finished body off the line and digitally scan it to ensure that the internal quality targets are being met. The tolerances are less than a single millimeter. Now it's time for a human touch on the hanging line, where artisans install the front and rear doors. Walk the fenders to the line and bolt them in place. Install the bonnet. And bolt on the rear hatch. Finally, each machine receives a comprehensive review from a craftsperson. I'm very proud to lead this team and to lead this software because I think that we are creating dreams. The machine might be a dream, but the affection for it knows no bounds. I'm very proud uh, of my work. When I go out in restaurant, usually I go with this shirt, and sometimes uh, people ask me about Maserati. It's easy to see that the satisfaction here echoes from within the soul. I feel like a father. The body shop team is my family. Completed bare metal bodies then head directly to the paint shop, where it will take over eight hours and 3.5 kilometers of conveyors to color the shell. The ECOT application is a specific chemical physical principles that is based on the electrophoresis. There is an electric field that is applied to the paint, charging some cells positively, while the body is charged negatively. The negatively charged bodies attract the positively charged anti-corrosion atoms, which creates an inseparable bond and a rust-proof coating. You have the rotation by 360 degrees. Why? Because only with this rotation, all the chemical products that are inside the tanks goes in each point of the bodies. The electro dip is the first of many high-tech tools employed inside the paint shop. To manage its process, we have specific laptops that allow us to see in each moment how the body works and where is the body. When a body is done being coated, it heads into an oven for a 160 degrees Celsius bake. 
the cooked and coated machines then enter the ceiling line, where humans close every nook and cranny by hand. We have the application of ceiling, and we apply the average for each car 115 meters. In these steps, it's very important. The work is challenging, but the payoff is often heartfelt. Maserati is famous in all the world, and when you see on TV on a specific film, for instance, I can see, oh, I paint it. Sealed bodies then go upstairs to the paint booth, where 41 robots get their color on. Now we are in the Hertel paint shop. Here you can see that we are applying the base coat. 25 of the robots apply the base coat, while the other 16 handle the clear coat. The cycle time is about three minutes. The stations aren't just fast, they're also extremely precise. On average, we applied 14 microns for base coat and 16 microns for clear coat. After the clear coat is applied, the bodies take another trip through an oven before man meets machine on a quality control line and artisans polish every millimeter by hand. Finished bodies are then ready to become brand new Levantes inside the Mirafiore factory final assembly hall. They switch the machine to a new carrier that can rotate it 90 degrees so craftspeople can access the underbody. This is a special line because we have the hooks to rotate the body in order to give the people an ergonomic way on this car. That is a big car with difficult operations. Principally, here we work on the undercarriage of the vehicle, the brakes, the front brake cables, and the door frames. Even though they're only installing brake lines, you can still feel the affection for the mark. It's a source of pride for me to see a car on the street and think that I was involved in its building, me and my colleagues, and we're only a small part of the process. It is a large group effort. Next, a craftsperson connects the giant Harman Kardon subwoofer. A station later, the battery is lifted into place. The process really gets going halfway down the first trim line when they begin to craft the handmade Italian interior. We used to take the dashboard and manually insert it in the car years ago. Today, with all of the new technologies available, we have this manipulator, which, as you see here, enables us to take the dashboard, connect it to the machine, and insert it directly in the car without the slightest strain on the part of the worker. Then the center console goes in. Before a quality expert reviews the partially completed car. When I was a kid, I always had a passion for cars, especially sports cars. And this is the realization of that dream. This is why I'm so happy to work here. Next, the final assembly line's only robot. We are standing in front of the machinery for the glass assembly. This specific machinery is for assembly of the rear window and windshield. It's the same robot which you see in operation right now. The robot moves swiftly and precisely, yet the automation doesn't take away from the fulfillment. Made in Italy is a guarantee of quality and originality. When we look at this vehicle, it is a combination of elegance and sportiness which characterize the Maserati brand and everything made in Italy. We maintain strong characteristics that are not overly influenced by passing fashions. We bring forward a beautiful and original product. The robot is programmed to be perfect, but it takes a different kind of training to ensure that the workers are just as flawless. 
We are actually at the MTS area. MTS stands for Manufacturing Training System. It's the system we use to train our operators and to keep them continuously updated on the work. The main thing is that quality is an obsession because Maserati is always a Maserati. Team leaders train employees in one-on-one -on -one sessions. It's a very hands-on way to teach and a modern method to pass down artisanal knowledge. Every time you build a Maserati, you have to focus on two things perfectly every time, the first time. As the machine continues to be assembled, in another part of the factory, the famed powertrain is born. We are now in one of the most important parts of our process. So in this area, our people are working on mechanical parts, working on gear box, on air suspension, and on our big, very, very, very big engine. They join the three-liter V6 engine with the eight-speed ZF transmission. In this moment, we are installing our very important motor engine on the drivetrain. In this particular case, our worker is working on a petrol engine, and our petrol engine comes from Ferrari. Anytime you put the Ferrari name on anything, it's a special thing. I mean, you put the Ferrari name on a pencil, and I'm going to keep it. Say that Ferrari makes this engine for Maserati is all the marketing they need. Boom, Ferrari engine in your car, you want it. You know immediately that it's a Maserati. You hear the motor, you hear the rumble. Even if I have my back turned, I turn because I know it's a Maserati. That is the beauty of Maserati. And then you see the beauty of the vehicle on the street. People on the street know the machine, but it might mean even more for the men and women who work here. My family is proud of the fact that I work for this brand. They are proud of my position. And they too feel pride when they see a Maserati driving around. When they see a Levante, when they're with friends, they say, my son worked on that. It's a source of pride for families of people who work here. The Moto Romantic Pride surfaces on the main drivetrain line, where they swing the motor and transmission subassembly into place, then add the front air suspension, disc brakes, and radiator, before lifting the entire unit onto a massive moving jig. Praticamente lo produciamo in sottogruppi, in isole di lavoro. We build it in steps and various work items. We have two important parts, as you can see. There is the front, where the motor, the chassis, the front suspension are found. And then there is the back, where those components are placed, and the rear suspension. Completed drivetrains then head directly to the main line. We are in the most important workstation in assembly. Here we have uh, the marriage between the body and the mechanical parts. Until Ferrari decides to build their own SUV, the Levante is the only machine of its kind that features an engine built in Maranello. It's a dream job. Dream job uh, not only for the cars, but also because it's uh, Italian cars. The Levante is more than just an Italian dream. It's also a renaissance machine that does nearly everything well. The only question is whether that's enough to bring Maserati out of the shadows. For more than a century, Maserati has handcrafted luxury machines for drivers in the know. Now, they're trying to break into the mainstream and increase their sales tenfold. 
thing that makes Maserati cool to most people is that it's unknown. You walk down the street and talk to most people and they say Maserati, oh, that sounds exotic, but they don't know anything about it. The most prominent display of that coolness gets installed on the bumper sub-assembly line, where the most modern Maserati ever receives its heirloom link with antiquity. In this particular workstation, Antonio is ready to install our grill on the front fascia with our famous Trident. Today, the Trident is striking, yet it harkens back to another age. As legend has it, in 1920, one of the seven Maserati brothers takes a visit to the Neptune Fountain in Bologna's Piazza Maggiore. The idle stroll inspires him to sketch a new company logo, and the result is automotive history. The Maserati logo is based on a piece of art. People respond to it because that's what art's all about. It brings some old Italian art history into this modern brand. And it also looks great, and it's exotic, and it's interesting, and it, and it resonates with people. It's very fast. But there are also rotating the bumpers, five screws to secure it. Completed bumpers head right to the line. This is a really amazing process because the preparation of our fascia is in front of us. The installation is here in order to minimize the transportation. And it is a beautiful, a really exciting process. Nearly finished machines move to the chassis line. I really love this car and I really love this job. This car is a synonymous of beauty and of luxury. It's a very fast form of luxury, thanks in large part to the sporty rubber. So after the installation of the front fascia is the installation of wheels. After the wheels are installed, they add a little bit more of the artisanal leather accoutrement. This is the workstation where seats are installed. They arrive just in sequence from the supplier, and our operator can position seats inside the car. At Mirafiore, they don't just position parts and pieces, but also family members for the future. It is quite rare. I would never have expected that one day I would have my son at my side, and in the same role I have, team leader, I have been in that role for 27 years. He has only been at it a few months, but he still has a little ways to go. He needs to grow into the job, just like his father. Even if it has been 27 years, there is always room for growth. My father and I work well together. He has taught me many things, despite the fact we work in different lines. I hope to carry his torch, because he is very good at what he does. At dinner, mom goes a little nuts because we talk about work all the time. Because we exchange advice and ideas for new projects and to bring forward new ideas. Some of those new ideas take place on the door sub-assembly line, where they build up a set of four doors by hand. The process begins with the installation of the handles. Then they add the locks, wiring harness, side mirrors, and glass, before bolting the leather interior panel into place. Completed doors then head back to the finishing line. We are now in the final line, so this is uh, one of the last workstations of our assembly shop. And in this particular workstation, we install our doors on the Levante. After five days of manufacturing, 
a new Levante is nearly ready. This is an Italian product. It's made in Italy. It's a performance car. It's a beautiful car. It's, a, in my opinion, a perfect car. Nothing in the world is similar to this kind of car. The machines mean a lot for the people, but perhaps even more for the country. The success of this car means that uh, our work, uh, our competence is recognized uh, in all the world. Hearts sing with anticipation when they fire the vehicle up for the very first time. Like when a child uh, was born. It's uh, the same sensation. When a Levante rolls off the line, it looks complete but it still has two critical quality control tests left to go. Each new machine is subjected to a shake test, then it takes a quick bath in the water booth. Finally, Maserati's newest machine is ready to hit the road. 95% of what you experience in the car isn't the hardware. Is this a strut or is this a multi-link? It's the tuning, and that's the hard bit. The majority of that tuning takes place in a highly secretive automotive proving ground. This is Beloco, and it's unlike any other racetrack on the planet. Beloco's test track is one of these places that you don't believe exists. jumps, everything's off camber, there are things to hit, there are guardrails, there are trees, and it's genuinely one of the most fun racetracks I've ever been on anywhere. The facility features a high-speed oval, a dedicated handling track, and an off-road circuit. You realize that kind of feeds back into the cars. These cars can deal with a lot of stuff that other car companies' cars can't. In my opinion, the key system and the key concept was to introduce the S-Spring standard on Levante. We can have an increase or decrease of the ride aids. We use ride aids not only in a speed-dependent way, in order to improve aerodynamics, we use ride aids also for drive modes. The drive modes raise and lower the Levante depending on what you want the machine to do and what terrain you wish to conquer. We have a normal mode, which is specifically intended for comfort. Then we have an ICE mode, which stands for increased control, which is good for low adherence condition. And then we have two sports settled. We added an uh, off-road driver. One sport mode alters the powertrain, while the other changes the suspension. What Maserati has done is picked the best types of suspension that they can use, front and rear, and then supplement it with air springs and adjustable shocks to make sure that the ride quality doesn't change if you have five people in the car versus one, and that you can set a sportier, firmer ride if you want to drive like you know, a maniac. The Levante is the one car out of the Maserati portfolio that I think fits the Maserati brand the best. It actually is nicer than most of its competitors and does drive more sporty than most of its competitors. Since its introduction, the Levante has accounted for 38% of Maserati's global sales. A startling number for a new machine. Yet numbers alone rarely tell the whole story. One of the things that makes an Italian engine so special is the sound. And Maserati does that really, really well. You hear one ripping by, and you turn your head, and then you see, oh my god, it's Maserati. And they've managed to do that with a V6, which often don't sound that great. The sound is evocative. Yet sitting behind the wheel might be even better. A Levante, even in normal mode, driving around town, 
is going to drive more aggressively and more sporty than the competition. It's entertaining to drive. They're lively cars, and they sound amazing. And they look like you would expect a Maserati to look as well. Sporty luxury that is reasonably affordable. Levante models start around 73,000 euros before options, while the more powerful S edition adds another 10,000 euros to the equation. If you see BMW and Mercedes as the successful working man's SUV, and you have Bentley and Lamborghini and this other upper stratosphere, Maserati's got a lot of play in that center section where people who can afford to spend a little bit more money on a styling statement will. And ultimately, that's what a Maserati is, right? Out on the road, the Italian styling is on full display. However, the quest for sales is often a double-edged sword. If the Levante doesn't do well in the marketplace, I think it has nothing to do with the Levante itself. As Maserati pushes sales towards 50,000 a year, the cars become less and less exotic. They're still special because 50,000 isn't a big number, but when they're chasing sales like this, the effect is they lose some exclusivity. Chasing a different market has its perils, but the reason to do so is absolutely clear. He's never made an SUV before. Naturally, people are gonna say, well, what do these guys know about it? And so they took it very seriously, and they made sure to make sure that this thing is a Maserati SUV. The Maserati Levante, a machine built to grow one of the most famous Italian motoring marks, and a 424 horsepower push into the future. I find it interesting that a brand with a history like Maserati has was not met with any resistance when they said they were going to build an SUV. I heard of no purist who said, oh, the end of the world, Maserati's building an SUV. I think we're OK with the idea of Maserati building an SUV because we just want something from them that we see on the road. This is one of these brands that everyone loves, but we don't get to experience all that often. Levante will finally, I think, put it on the map for a lot of consumers that didn't consider one of their cars before.